hopefully that gives you a good sense of what uh, maybe some of these utility uh, type of functions are that are here in um, the drawing resources area. I mentioned there's a resource that allows us to also do things uh, like we can, well, we can modify borders and title blocks here as well. One of the major things that I see customers wanting to do is um, automate the process, the completion or the filling out of the information in the title block and to use as much possible information from the model itself as we can. And so that makes a lot of sense to do that, to accomplish that task here. So we've got on our sheet here, we have an ANSI large title block. And I'm just going to, for clarity here, remove that. We can only have one title block at a time in each sheet. Um, so I'm just going to remove that title block. So we're really focusing in on the title block that we're going to be modifying, which is the ANSI A, or sorry, ANSI large. And we can choose the edit option for this. And that's just going to bring up that title block. And what you'll see here is this is really just made up of standard inventor 2D sketch line work. You'll see there are some parameters that have been added here. Um, and then there's also uh, dimensional parameters and equations that have been used to control the opening sizes on these boxes. But we also see some uh, information here that are identified with brackets around them. So in this case, I'm going to focus in on part number. I would like the part number four uh, that gets placed in the title block for this drawing to, to reconcile, to be the same as the part number of the component, the model itself, that's being documented. So I'd rather switch, rather than having um, to come into this drawing properties and adjust the part number each time that maybe we made a change to the part number, what I'd really rather have happen is to use the um, model properties for part number be what gets placed into the title block on the drawing. So now if I go in and make edits to the model and its name uh, or its part number property, then the drawing will automatically update to reflect those changes. A very good way to work. I have a couple of comments and cautions uh, when using this uh, just in, in a special case. But I'll finish that process. So now we've got a part number property that's coming from the model properties. We can do that same kind of thing um, for the title if we wanted to. Right? The, again, the source of these documents are from uh, the, the properties in the drawing. So if I switch the model properties again and do the model property, I, I have to pre-highlight that to override it and then go into title and then overwrite the existing property with the model property. Now we're talking about customizing this title block so it's all the information is coming from one single source. And I don't have to edit it both places in order to accomplish maybe with the task I'm looking for. The one thing I would caution against in this in this case, the revision number itself, the property for revision number, notice that that's coming from the drawing properties that's probably actually a good idea. This would be one of the things that I wouldn't modify to point back to the model. And it depends on your organization and your workflow. But the reality is that this probably should be a drawing property. Um, consider the number of times that you've had to revise a drawing and reissue it with a new revision where the changes that you might be making to that drawing have nothing to do with the model itself. Maybe we're just adding a new view for clarity. Maybe we forgot some dimensions. And those, those types of changes are drawing specific. So I kind of tend to resist using the model revision property in the drawing because basically um, I might need to make a change to that model, but uh, I might not need to make a change to the model, and I, but I still want to bump the revision level on the drawing. So just be careful when it comes to the revision property um, when automating the field population here. Okay, so hopefully that's good information. Uh, basically, I would just finish the editing here as needed. I could save it as a new name. I could call it, you know, our own personal, my large title block. All right, so now I've got a new resource that has the uh, one that's stock out of the box where the properties are coming from the, the drawing uh, file itself. In this case, the model properties are coming from the, the model itself. And I could do that for all of the information here. So if I wanted to finish the job and have the title be filled out here, the workflow would be for me to come into the model itself. 
and open the model. And then in the model information, go ahead and make those updates. So that way I'm going to uh, just a single place to make these changes. If I could type it, be a, be a better show. Okay, so I'm just closing, uh, saving those changes back. And so we'll see that that now is coming from a common source. If anything you can do to load all the information into the modeling environment will certainly be beneficial and uh, help with some automation there as well. Okay, um, a material, uh, obviously a great field to have on something like this. So I could add a new, a new field um, using that same workflow and by editing the title block, putting a field in there, and then just referencing the material field for that model. And that way, as I change material on the model itself, that documentation would also be updated here in the in the drawing environment. You just don't. You simply don't want to repeat work. It's redundant and error prone. 